Hey, welcome to Mechanical Pros. Today we're going to talk about how to back flush a heat exchanger on a water source heat pump. This is what you might call a tube and tube or coaxial coil heat exchanger. Basically, we have this copper piping going in and out of this heat exchanger, bringing water through here, and between the copper piping and this steel jacket is refrigerant. So what can happen to you sometimes is you may get a dirty strainer, I'm about to show you how to clean that, or maybe the strainer's clean or you've cleaned it and you're still having issues. So what can happen is you can get some trash stuck in this copper piping as it goes through the loops and back out. Comes in the bottom, circulates through. As it does that, it's picking up, it's rejecting or absorbing heat from the refrigerant that is in between this steel jacket and this copper piping. Inside the copper piping is water. Outside of the copper piping, encapsulating that in this steel jacket is refrigerant. So what can happen is you can get some trash in this copper piping. So we're gonna talk about how do I get that out of there? I've cleaned my strainer, done those steps, but I'm not sure I've got it all out. And we're gonna talk about how do you back flush it. Basically, force water. Instead of on the entering side, we're gonna force water on the leaving side backwards and flush all that trash back out. Okay, so what we have here is a typical water source heat pump. This happens to be a Daikin water source heat pump, a two ton. Had a little bit of shipping damage when it came in, so we're using it as a cutaway for these demonstrations. So in any water source heat pump, you're gonna have an inlet water and an outlet water. The configuration may change per brands, but for us, our inlet water is coming in on the bottom of the unit, circulating through this coil and coming out on the top here. So on the inlet side, we have a strainer device, a little basket strainer inside this, this Y here. Um, this is a nice little hose setup that also has a blow down where you could take the top off. And while you have the pressure, you could open that and flush any trash out that might be in that strainer, right? So then the water goes in through here and assuming we have a nice clean strainer, runs through our little heat exchanger again. As you can see, copper pipe, that's our water coming in, and outside of that, we have this steel jacket. So we'll have refrigerant encapsulated around this copper water pipe, rejecting or absorbing that heat, depending on what mode of operation we're in. So we go through, we come out, and then on the leaving side, very important, this is what's called a circuit setter. You can adjust the amount of water flow going through that little coaxial coil there that'll help give you the proper water flow across that heat exchanger so you know you're running at optimal pressures in the heating and cooling mode for your refrigerant circuit. So very important, they give you a nice little test port so you can check your water flow there. This should usually be done by the test and balance company that comes in after the building is set up. The way this should always work is this is nothing we should ever have to adjust, but you never know who's been there before you they may have decided they want to start adjusting this, but they give you nice little pressure ports where you can check that water flow. So we're not going to get a lot into circuit setters. That'll be a video that follows here. Today, what we're really going to be talking about is restricted strainers and how that can affect your system. So if I'm running in the cooling mode and I come over to my water source heat pump and it's faulted out, I've got an alarm in it, it's not running, the fan's running, no cooling going on. Printed circuit board on your water source heat pump just about every brand out there within the last 20 years will flash a diagnostic code. In other words, there's an LED on that printed circuit board that'll flash a certain number of times. You pull your front cover off, you look at the chart and it tells you say five flashes means high head pressure. Okay, well that tells me right away, I'm not transferring that heat out of this coil like I should. So why would that be? Well, the water is flowing across it, so obviously it's not flowing at the right rate. It could even be too much water, which would then lead back into your circuit setter. But we're gonna say we don't have the right water flow we should have, it's not enough water. The first thing you wanna check is the strainer that lives in the body of this little brass Y valve assembly. So the easiest thing to do, you want to turn your water valves off. Obviously, we're going to turn the unit off first, and then we'll shut our water flow off. So now our unit's isolated because you're going to get a little water out of this. What I like to always do, usually these guys live above ceiling. Sometimes they're in mechanical rooms. Most of the time they're above ceiling. So I'm going to take a small bucket with me, a two to three gallon bucket. Somehow hook it under this guy. I'll take this cap off. I'll open this valve 
And what that's going to do for me is drain whatever water is in this because maybe you're above an IT room. You don't want to spill water wherever you are. You don't want to spill water in the customer space. So you, something to clean that up. A bucket put under there, open it, drain that water out. Now we need to expose this strainer and see if it's dirty or not. So you'll need two wrenches. Typically you would use a pipe wrench and a crescent wrench or something, or maybe two pipe wrenches. This is a pretty small unit, so I can get away with just a pipe wrench and a pair of channel locks. The key to it, and I learned this coming up a long time ago, is uh, as crazy as it sounds, if you have them spread way apart and you're over here like this, even though it feels like you're putting so much force on that, it won't budge. If you just put your wrenches together, it only takes one hand to spin that. So we've done that, we've loosened that up. Now we're gonna open this up, spin that right off there. Screw that cap on there. First thing we need to do is we've cleaned our strainer. Let's set him to the side. Then we're gonna put our cap back in with our little valve on it, that'll drain. Screw that back on there. Let's close this drain. Now typically our water flows this way, goes through, comes back out. It's as simple. We got our valves closed. All we're going to do is reverse that water flow from going this way in to now coming this way in. And all you have to do, close both your valves, close this valve, open this guy up, get your bucket hooked up under it because you're going to get water out. Turn this on, let all that drain out, and you'll get maybe half a gallon, if that, of water that'll drain down into your bucket. Now, turn the leave-in side of the water on and because this is valved off the pressure difference won't be restricting this flow it'll let this water flow backwards through here and that will flush out all the trash that is in this little coaxial tube heat exchanger back into your bucket and you'll be amazed how much trash comes out of that once you get that done tighten everything back up put our strainer back in our y check all your water connections hook everything back up open your valve, start your unit, and more than likely, it's gonna run just like it should now. You'll have cleared that obstruction. In the summertime, you're getting faults for high head pressure, or in the heating mode, if you see low evap pressure or low evap temperature, it could be this, because in the heating mode, this is gonna get cold, and if this is restricted, it lets this get too cold, and it has sensors that'll generate faults and shut the equipment off to protect it. So that's the basics on how to check a Y strainer, make sure it's clean, then also how to back flush this coil. Good practice, go ahead and clean the strainer, and if you've got the time and you've got something to catch the water in, go ahead and back flush this thing. It only takes a couple minutes, and then you can walk away feeling confident that the unit is clean, that fault code isn't going to come back. If we just clean the strainer and we don't do that, we don't know for sure. We're taking a gamble that that customer's going to be happy but if you come in there and do the work, next day they get the same fault code, not good. Thanks for watching everyone. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, be sure to shoot us a comment and we'll make sure we get right back to you. And again, next video we're going to talk about how to chemically clean this in case it's scaled and we just can't back flush it. So be sure to watch for that and we'll see you next time on Mechanical Pros.